Hello, my name is Karx82 and welcome back to my Greg Tech New Horizons tutorial series. Today we are going to be going over Greg Tech Power. And just a quick disclaimer, this is just from personal experience playing the mod pack. I do not know the source code, so some of the fingers I may say might be off, but like I said, it is just what I have experienced in my playthrough. And at the end of the last age, we crafted up the basic steam turbine so we can start producing some power. And for that, we're going to feed it our steam. So we'll, you'll probably just import it uh, directly from the boilers. But in this test world, we are just going to set up a infinite source of steam. And there is actually an infinite fluid tank if you would like to do some testing. And I always suggest doing it at test world. So if you make some mistakes in Greg Tech, it can lead to your entire base being blown up so just keep that in mind there is a infinite fluid source so basically you just put the place it down and right click it with a fluid and it will have an infinite amount in it now we will need to supply this with steam and if we look at the steam turbine it converts uh, steam to eu at two liters of steam to one eu so basically double the amount of steam to the EU that you're producing. And this consumes up to 1600 liters of steam per second. And we can actually show what happens if you do not supply enough steam. And if we look at pump, it only does 600 or 640 liters per second. So I'm just gonna place that on there. You import the steam from the fluid tank. And once it fills up the buffer, it will start filling up. So there it goes, it's filling up. But we are actually not producing enough power to output the full amp. And show that if we put down a battery buffer and put a battery in it, so the LV batteries. Oh, throw that in there. This will start filling up the battery, so it's outputting a f as much power as it possibly can, which would be 32 EU per tick, but. We are not supplying it with enough steam, so it's actually dropping. And then when it runs out of steam, it's actually not going to be supplying 32. It'll just be supplying whatever it possibly can uh, EU per tick. So as we can see, it's definitely not running smoothly there. We want to, we can switch out the pump and we will see the difference. So we need a crowbar and you can just right click these components. And that will remove that. And if we put the electric pump, which supplies 10,000 liters per second, by that, we can see the amount of steam is going up. And this is going up at a steady slope. So if you are running low on steam, it means you are trying to output more power than you are supplying it with steam. So just keep that in mind. I see a lot of that questions. Why is this not running? at full speed. And now that we're producing some power, let's take a look at fuel efficiency. And if we mouse over the base 16 turbine, we can see the fuel efficiency is 85%, which means instead of actually consuming two liters of steam per one EU, we're actually consuming more than that to produce the same amount of EU. And if we look at the different turbines, 85%, uh, the next tier up is 75%, and the HV1 is actually all the way down to 66%. So you're actually going to have to be producing a lot more steam to produce the same amount of EU. So some people like to spam a lot of low level machines because they are more efficient. I have a tendency to want to build the highest tier I possibly can, even though it's less efficient, but it is easier to deal with less machines, less cabling, less cable loss, and so on. So in the case of the LEV and the HV 16 turbines would be much more efficient than just the one uh, HV turbine, but I leave that up to you, which you would rather deal with 16 machines or one machine. And now that we've gone over fuel efficiency, let's talk about how we get the power to the different machines that we're going to build. And I have crafted up a couple machines here. Some of the first ones you will probably end up getting and one, it's a little more advanced, but we'll see why I did that. Now, the cool thing about the basic steam turbines is if you're not producing power, you will not be consuming steam. So we will see that when we start using the power, it'll start consuming it. And as soon as the process 
in the machine is done, it'll stop. Each of these generators output one amp. So if we took a look at the cables, which will be 10 at this stage of the game probably, this can handle one amp at one loss per meter. And this is two amps and one loss and four amps and so on and so forth. So in this case, since we're only producing a one amp, we can actually use the one amp tin cable. And this is the same as the pipes. If you right click on the end of the cable, it'll automatically connect. If you right click anywhere else, it will not automatically connect, which is pretty cool because you don't want stuff automatically connecting. You might get some explosions. So let's just run this line here. And in the case of the wire, you actually need a wire cutter. And this works similar to the wrench with the fluid pipes. Basically just right click where you want the thing to connect. There we go. So we've connected our machines directly to the steam turbine. And in the case of the wire mill, we can just throw some case of tin let's just throw some tin ingots in there and do two put the tin ingots in and it will consume the ingot start producing the tin wires and as we can see the uh, steam turbine is consuming some steam and outputting the power now if we look at the recipe for the tin wire it will tell you in the wire mill it is actually only consuming four eu per tick so this is a very cheap recipe which is pretty cool so that means you can run a whole bunch of machines off the one steam turbine and if we look at the plate machine if we put this in here this will produce plates for us at a one-to-one -one ratio but we'll get more into this in the next age tutorial but as we can see That'll also consume power and we'll get our 10 plates. If we look at the recipe here, it's actually producing or consuming 24 U per tick. So let's say we put three of those in there. This will be consuming much more steam um, to produce the 10 plates. And in the case of the arc furnace, this one actually requires, this recipe actually requires three amps of 30 EU per tick. So this actually runs off LV power, but it actually needs 90 EU per tick. So this is a very power hungry machine and we'll see uh, what that means in the, in regards to how many machines you can run off the one steam turbine. And now is a good time to talk about cable loss. If we remember, if we, Mouse over the tin cable, we see it's a loss of one per meter per amp. And basically what that means is for every piece of cable, you're actually gonna be getting less and less power through that machine. So in the case of this, it needs 24. And if we throw a bunch in there, we'll just do that. And unfortunately you will not be able to get this portable scanner until the MBH, but it does a good job showing what's going on. You right click on a cable it'll show you we are getting 31 eu per tick and basically what that's saying is when this outputs the power it's only getting 31 you actually lose one getting it into this cable and then you lose one more getting into this one and this one and so forth so this one is only getting 30 eu per tick now i have done a couple machines here so we can see that in action and if we put it here we Right click on this cable. This is actually getting 24 EU per tick. So if you remember the recipe for tin plates requires 24 EU per tick. So at this point, we are producing the power. It's coming down here. We're losing a bunch in the way, but we are getting enough to run this machine. But this one all the way down here, there, and throw the tin cables in there. If you look at this wire, it's only getting 16 EU per tick. Now these machines, have a internal buffer, we can see it right there, and it is actually dropping because we're not getting enough power and attention, this device needs more power. And the recipe has failed. It stopped running and it'll try again, but will not get enough power. It may get enough for a couple with the internal buffer, but as soon as the internal buffer runs out, it'll stop. 
Attention, this device needs more power, but now it's going to start filling up the internal buffer and then it'll restart again. So as we can see, it's starting and stopping. So it is actually sort of working, but basically this is not how you want your machines to run. Uh, but that's kind of the very basics of cable loss. Now, one thing I should point out, because without having this portable scanner, it's a bit confusing at first. So in the LVH, you might be wondering what's going on. Uh, each of these machines have an internal buffer. So as we can see right there, the internal buffer is 2048 EU. And when you run the recipes, it pulls from that internal buffer. Some more 10 ingots to show this. That in there, that circuit down here. So you're gonna pull that out so it stops. Put that in there. It is running, and if we right click on that, we can see the internal buffer is jumping up and down. And basically, how the Greg Tap power system works is when the whatever the tier is, in this case, we are a LV tier, so it accepts 32 EU per tick. Basically, when we drop down and we have room from the buffer, so once we get down to, what, 116 or whatever, it'll pull one amp of LEV power and fill up this buffer. And as soon as it drops down enough to accept the 32 EU per tick, it'll pull one amp from here. And that's kind of how it works. So sometimes the internal buffer, because it is hidden on these machines, there's no, it doesn't say anything about that or, it gets a bit confusing for people why sometimes, in the case of this, why does it work sometimes and then stop and say it needs more power kind of thing. So in general, that's just basically how the power system works. Almost everything has an internal buffer. Even the basic steam turbines have an internal buffer. Now, what does that internal buffer mean? It actually means that instead of having one turbine per machine here, so I put down a five wire mills because of the internal buffer, the way it works is we can actually run multiple machines off this. You can see we are running five machines. So you would think, oh, we're only producing one amp. How is that working? Well, it's actually waiting for it to drop down enough to request another amp of power. And since this recipe is so low, remember it was a four U per tick, I believe. A for you per tick, we can actually run a whole bunch of these machines off just one singular turbine, which is, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. How that works. Obviously, different EU per ticks is going to cause some more issues. But in theory, if you have uh, enough machines to get the 32 per tick minus all the cable loss and stuff, I mean, there's a whole lot of different math and stuff involved here. Uh, you can actually run multiple machines off just the one turbine. And now that we've gone over what happens when you connect the machines directly to the steam turbines, let's talk about battery buffers. I like to use battery buffers. For that, if we look at the battery buffers, there are different sizes. Now there is a one slot, four, nine, and 16. And that basically just depends how many batteries you want to put in there. I'm going to use the or slot battery buffer and basically what that means if you look at this there's slots for four batteries and i'm going to place one battery in there and once it fills up the internal buffer of the battery buffer it'll start filling up the batteries so basically the way we had it set up before we are outputting one amp into the battery buffer it's filling up the battery buffer and the battery buffer depending on the amount of batteries that we have is how many amps it outputs. So this is almost the exact same setup as before, except there is a bit of a buffer in between. So I like to use the batteries. Now, if we add more, it'll actually fill up all four batteries. We'll uh, be able to output four amps to our machines. So we will be able to run a whole lot more machines off just the one steam turbine. So in the case of this, I like to have the uh, like the steam turbine, the one steam turbine filling up the battery buffer. And while I'm off saying like building something over in a different part of the base, 
the battery buffers are filling up. And then when I need to come over here and craft up a machine or something like that, I will do like burst crafting, which is will be running a whole bunch of machines all at once kind of thing. But as soon as I'm done with that, the internal buffer will start filling up again. And basically what that lets you do is use less generators um, to produce the power because we're not using it all the time. So some people think you should have to use more generators and have more uh, power generation to run a whole bunch of machines, or you can just use less generators and do on crafting at demand. Now, obviously what this means is since we're producing a lot less, we can't be running a whole bunch of machines for long periods of time. But uh, basically as your uh, base grows, you will kind of continually expand your power generation. And uh, yeah, as the more machines you need and the more uh, power uh, you need, you will kind of expand that as you go. But I find this just a bit easier, especially in the beginning, so you have to uh, get a lot less infrastructure to run more machines. Like I said, there is four amps coming out of this, so we can actually run a couple machines here. But the problem is if we're running this and I'm running this bending machine, that means we are two machines. They might pull two amps. Do that. We're going to have some fire here. So it burns up the wire. The the, uh, the battery buffer tried to output two amps, one to this, one to that, and the 1x cable did not work. So in this case, we have 4x tin cables. So let's go ahead and break this. We can actually, now that I'm thinking about it, since we're only going to be running two machines, we can actually only, we only need the 2x cable. So let's go ahead and run this and hopefully don't doesn't prove me wrong but that should start outputting to there connect this to there now basically these machines will run there it goes and there this one should go Yep, it's running. So now we are running two machines and for example, this has one amp here. And then uh, as soon as this pulls a second amp, we'll have two amps running along here. Um, so as we can see, just because we have four batteries in here, which are capable of outputting four amps, you actually don't need that many cables. But a good rule of thumb is to basically the amount of batteries is the size of the the cable that you want. So in theory, this one would probably be, I would say, use four amps in this case. So we can run all these machines, but since there's only one more sh machine after this, you can actually drop down the size of the cable because this will never be able to pull more than two amps. So you never need more than two X, even though there is four batteries in there. So hopefully that made a bit of sense. It's a bit confusing trying to explain how the, the cables work, but you don't always need the full size. If you want to be super safe, just run, if you have four batteries, just run four X cables the entire line. Um, and then for example, that one down there, since there's, that's the last machine that can only pull so many, in general, they pull one amp. Occasionally they pull more than one amp to fill up a battery buffer if there's like an issue with uh, filling up the internal buffer, but for the most part, you don't need to run bigger cable than that is possible. Um, but yeah, so the single block machines, uh, just try to keep in mind that at the worst case scenario, it might pull two amps, but for the most part, it doesn't. And lastly, with the batteries, uh, they output one amp each, and in theory, they can pull two amps each. So keep that in mind when you're trying to power them. Go ahead and craft it up a few more here. And the same with this, this will output one, this will output one, this will output one. So while doing the cabling, you want to use the absolute less you want, 
We'll put the 1x cable here because there can only be one amp running down this way. It'll only go this way. Um, but now that we have a second one there, we're going to need a 2x because we're going to have two amps running through there. So one from there, one from there. And then we add a third one. We're actually going to need a 4x cable. That because there'll be three amps running from this. So one, two, three kind of thing. So like that. Steam turbines will turn on. Unfortunately, we can't. Oh, there it is. So yeah, they're uh, actually probably need bigger pipes here. Actually, no. Pipes are actually fine. Um, but yeah, so we can see one amp, two amps out of two, three amps out of four. So I feel like that kind of is a good kind of representation of how these work. Got a little bit wordy when I was trying to explain what goes on with these, but. Uh, yeah, there we go. But anyway, I, that is a kind of a basic introduction of how the power gen in Greg Tag works. And uh, I'll get a little bit more into some of it in the next uh, age tutorial, which will be the LV age. I'm not going to go over every single machine. There is a whole lot of them. But uh, yeah, we'll get to that in the next episode of the tutorial. But anyway, thanks for watching and have a good one.